this idea of selling utopia and selling the fantasy of a place, but then always kind of destroying it, pulling it back. So it's like I'm presenting something and I'm trying to lure the person in, but then at the same time, like, you know, there's paint splashed around or it's kind of off-putting. So it's always kind of pulling it back and not committing to the fantasy or, or denying the fantasy in a way. It seems to be really overly drawn to fluorescent colors. It's a really nice way to make something that's just not too pleasing, especially too with landscape, it's so unnatural and that natural environment. So it's creating like a counterpoint. So I started getting really into kind of pulling buildings from like Las Vegas and Dubai, th things from like all over the world and kind of mashing them together into one kind of fantasy place. When I Google them and I, I find all these pictures of these places, it's really just the same pictures over and over and over again. So it becomes this idea of the collective conscious of what the place is. And that's really has nothing to do with what like Hawaii actually looks like. Cause it's, you know, it's this pristine spot over here and this pristine spot over there. And that's kind of what we like to think of those places, but isn't what's really there. Going to a place really kind of turns the whole idea of what I was doing on its head. I wasn't quite sure what would come out of it. I just knew that it was important for my work to move forward to start going to these places. I went to Belize. I think it ended up with like 3,000 pictures. It's just over documenting everything, <laughs> you know, and taking close ups so that um, I could remember how the trees were because, you know, each, each large tree has probably, you know, 50 other things growing out of it. You know, vines that hang off of it, and there's ferns just kind of sticking out of every little orifice. And that was maybe next to a major temple or something like that. So I was able to get the pictures that everybody else gets, and then everything else around it. It took me a while, even after I got back, to think about, well, now what am I doing? Because I don't want to just make landscape paintings about a place. But I was interested in what the Hudson River School artists were doing, this idea that they went to the place and then was selling the fantasy of it. They, they kind of made an idea or an impression of the place. And so I liked that in some ways I was repeating that. A lot of times things will start to kind of come together, but they're not right where I want them or there's just, it, it just isn't complex enough or there's just something, there's just something missing about it. So I'll just, sand it back and kind of almost like take it down a couple notches and then I have to essentially repaint it. Putting it on the floor and you know, using spray paint and, and kind of pouring paint on it is another way to kind of break open the paint or um, trying to keep it from being too finished or too pretty or too done or too, too realistic in a way. There should always be something a bit off about them, a little off-putting or dark. Like I really like that where you can kind of be drawn into it for the beauty or something like that, but then there's just something maybe cynical or not right about it. You know, it's, a, it's about finding that, that balance and, you know, drawing you know, in and then flipping it back out.
Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.